Um, thank you for being here this morning. Just a couple of things for you to know. Um, but I, before I give my announcements, I'm going to throw it to Reverend Martin, and she's going to let you know what's up for Rally Day. Good morning. Happy Rally Day. It is so good to have each and every one of you and you all here with us this morning on this day where we kick off our fall ministries. So look around in your pews. There are six different pews with clipboards with bright orange sheets of paper on them. If you're sitting next to one, pick it up. You don't win anything. But if you're sitting next to one, pick it up. Yep, I see that one. There's one right there. This one's up here. We'll find it for you. We'll move it. Yep, yep, good. Jean Eckert's got one. Jane, it's probably right behind you. Perfect. Awesome. I see all six of these. So these, you can put it down now. Thank you. So these are the community group signups. So I talked about these some last week. There are, I think, 15 different options for all of you to get involved with one another in some way brought together by a common interest. So some of these are based on board games or card games. Some of them are if you want to go get together and take a walk in North Park, if you want to find people to play golf with, if you want to find people to go out and eat, or if you want to make dinner in your home and invite people into your home. There are so many different opportunities for all of you to get involved. Um, We encourage you to read this clipboard as it comes around during the service. Ben and I give you permission to read and and not listen to us. So look at those and try to sign up for at least one. We also have, um, there's explanations of each of them on the clipboard, but also uh, in the narthex, there's a big bulletin board with a huge poster of all of these and another place to sign up. So if you don't wanna look at it during the service, but during fellowship time, you wanna grab some juice or lemonade and read over the board and sign up out there, know that there's a sign up there as well. I am really excited about the idea of these groups and getting them rolling. So if you see one that you want to get interested in, or maybe two or three, um, just to see what what the groups look like, please put your name down and we are happy to get these rolling as soon as possible. And the other announcement we have for Rally Day is that this Saturday, the 18th, will be our first free movie in the parking lot. So we're going to do these every other week as often as possible while the weather is nice. These are free movies for you all, but also the community. So if you have a neighbor you think would enjoy a certain movie we're watching, please invite them to come, bring your own chair, whatever snacks or drinks you wanna bring, and come enjoy a free movie outside while the weather is nice. I believe this Saturday we'll be watching Soul, um, the Disney Pixar movie that just came out in the last year, I think. So if you have any movie suggestions of things you would like to see at our outdoor movies, please contact me and let me know. But those are some of the things that we have rolling for all of you that we are really excited about this year. That was Oscar winning soul. That was the Oscar winner this year. Um, So in addition to that, uh, as I've been alluding to for the last couple weeks, I'm going to be shifting some of my uh, class. Uh, You know you have the online class with uh, Dr. Phelps and Bob Taylor, uh, which is at 845, right? 845 online, and so that will continue to be online to give you one option. And then we wanted to give you an in-person option. And so uh, what I'm trying, again, is uh, starting in October, so October 3rd, uh, the second look class, which I've been conducting online, will move to in-person. So what will happen is that you will come, you'll have your fellowship time, you'll grab a cookie or something like that, you'll meet me in the Berean room, and then we'll talk about the sermon that I just gave, or if Reverend Steph was uh, the one who was uh, preaching that day, that she'll join us and we'll, we'll talk about, uh, for maybe about 30 minutes, we'll just talk about the sermon that I just gave. Uh, to complement that, I'm going to be doing something called First Look, which is uh, an online study that is going to be looking at the sermon I'm going to do. And so you'll have, you'll have both, and we'll, we'll give you all the links and everything to that. Um, but you'll have as many options as, uh, as we can. Uh, given the world of COVID that we live in, uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, we had some in-person and some online stuff available to you. So, um, again, that class will start in person on October 3rd. All right. So, a couple other things for you to be uh, knowledgeable about. First... Uh, You may have seen that uh, the 319 churches did a a service of remembrance, lament, and hope 
Um, we, uh, we released that yesterday on the 20th anniversary of 9-11. If you have not had an opportunity to participate in that service, we encourage you to. Um, that's available to you um, in all the online places it normally is. Uh, so um, participate in that if you can. Second, um, the way that the service, the, the way that things will work after the service today, it's a little unique. Uh, one, we'll be having, uh, since it's nice, we decided why not continue to have fellowship time outside. So outside there in the, uh, in the yard will be uh, fellowship time, and so you can join us for that. Uh, also, the sign-ups, as uh, Steph alluded to, uh, the sign-ups for the groups will also be out there. So if you don't sign up for something uh, on the pads that you have there, the sign-up uh, board is outside of the narthex there, so you can look at that as well. After you have that time, down in the parking lot in our little garden right, out, right outside of the uh, parking spaces, uh, if you may have noticed that we have a special, uh, not a guest because he's a member here, but we have a special guest here, Bill Springer, is up from Florida, and uh, we are having a, a dedication um, of a plaque that was uh, presented uh, for Ruth, and so we're going to be having uh, a special time um, after fellowship time right there where that plaque is uh, down in the little garden. So if you can join us for that, it'll, it'll just be a, a few minutes uh, of prayer and dedication, so we would like you to join us for that as well. Uh, so just know that those that's kind of a flow of the day. Um, the other thing to know, well, two other things to know about, you probably saw signs for a, uh, a campus cleanup. Uh, we'll be doing some uh, light landscaping and that sort of thing. Uh, uh, Bill Goff, I think, put that together, and so... Uh, join us on the 25th in the morning, the 25th of September, from I think it was 8.30 to noon. So if you can join us for any portion of that, uh, we're in the midst of uh, uh, some sort of some transitions in terms of our landscaping. Um, you know, pulling out the things that need to be pulled out and planting some new things. And so we would love for you to be a part of that first stage if you can. Uh, again, that's the 25th uh, in the morning, 8.30 to noon. I went through all of those very quickly, and so if you need a refresher on that, uh, let me know after the service. Uh, but the only other thing to know about is that I will have some uh, vacation time this week. Um, I'll be in worship on Sunday, but um, Monday through Friday I'll be off. Just I'll be in town, um, but I'll be off for a few days. So just to let you know that that's true. Um, you know, the office and everybody else is doing their thing, but um, I'll be off for a few days, so thank you for that ahead of time. Now let me pause through all of that and see if there's any other announcements. I'll start with my regulars. Scanning, 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 scanning. <laughs> Steph, has one. where'd you go? Oh, there she is. Yes. Oh, you're good. Okay, good. All right. Very nice. All right. So, now that we have all of our announcements uh, included, let us begin our time of worship together. Good morning, everyone. 
Um, before we start, I would just like to say hello to my wife, Diane, who's watching this worship service at, uh, at home on television land. So, um, so I would like to invite you all to stand uh, physically or spiritually and uh, join with me in the call, in the intro, intro, call to worship. <clears throat> Love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Called on the name of the Lord, O oh Lord, I pray, save my life. Come, let us worship God. Of all the things that can draw us away from a right relationship with God, apathy may be the one that poses the greatest threat. Let us be inspired to come before the Lord with humility. Let us go before God first together and then silently. Please join me in the prayer of confession. We yearn to remember your ways, O loving teacher. Too often we forget them or reject them outright. We settle instead for truths that are convenient and that serve our own desires. Strengthen our resolve and teach us once more to be faithful disciples. Fill us again with your wisdom that we might be a blessing to others. 
This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. And now shall we take a moment for silent confession. Let us hear now the words of assurance. The mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. confronted with difficult truths. And I have now, as a, a parent of a five-year-old, I have someone who watches a program, uh, a, a cartoon called Wild Kratz. The Kratz are their last name. Do you, do you know Wild Kratz? You know Wild Kratz. Okay. Wild Kratz is a PBS show, and it, it basically is an adventure show about animals. And I was watching this with Liam the other day, and I was confronted with this truth, and, and I think in my heart I knew that this was true, but maybe I just didn't want to believe it. Lions are not really the king of anything. We've been lied to all of our lives. Stephen, we've been lied to. They're not really the kings of anything. First of all, they don't live in jungles. That, that just, just the idea of that, can anyone else confirm there's someone where, where are they? Where's Jim and Jim? They don't live in jungles. They, yeah, they live... Africa's a big place. There's lots of other places they live. They don't live in jungles. There are other animals that are tougher. There's, they don't deal with elephants. Right? They don't mess with elephants. And the ones with the manes don't do anything, it doesn't seem like. They get all of the uh, accolades. They're on the, they're the logo of many teams, but they don't really do anything. They sleep 20 hours a day. They're like a really, really bad high school student. They don't, they're just, they're just, they're not doing anything. And you have to somehow grapple with that. Those are the, just, your world changes when you realize that we've been just bamboozled all of our lives when it comes to the lives of lions. And sometimes it just happens. Sometimes when we learn something about nature or the world around us, we have to go, oh, well, that changes something. Now, lions not being who we all thought lions were doesn't necessarily mean that your whole life has changed. I think you'll be okay the rest of the day. I mean, you know, if, if anyone needs to pray afterwards, let me know. But, like, I understand that it's probably not the biggest deal. But you and I have lots of things in life that can change our perspective quickly when we learn the truth about it. Sometimes it's a not so great thing, and sometimes it's a wonderful thing. We learn something new about a person, or a group of people, or a nation, or a neighborhood, or our neighbor, or our parents, or whatever it happens to be, and it changes our perspective. One of the things we do along the way is that we learn constantly. And what we're going to be talking about today in the sermon is the fact that in life, and in school, and in our jobs, and in our families, we're constantly learning. And sometimes the things that we learn will make us go, oh, I, one, I'm not even sure if I was ready for that. And two, I don't know what to do now. That feeling, that anxious feeling of... I don't know what to do now. 
can be kind of scary. Understandable. That applies to life, it applies to the scripture, it, it applies to church, all those things. But what we have, thankfully, is that when I recognize with Liam that lions are not who I thought they were, you know, I've got a buddy who can walk me through it because he doesn't care about that. He just wants to learn about the animal. We also have the same thing. Church should be that. It should be something where we are constantly looking at the things that we know and then challenging those or learning more about them each and every day so that we can draw ourselves closer and closer to who God is. Now, I don't think that's easy, and I know you don't either. But it's one of the things that we do, and that's, and that's why I think days like today remind me of what we get to do. We get to learn these things about Scripture, or about God, or ourselves, or the world, that maybe shake things up a bit, but they also free us towards something. Free us to be reminded that we are always in a place where something new can come our way and we have all of these wonderful people who can help us to think about it. What do you think? That's the beauty of church. Whether you're online at home or you're here in person, that's the beauty of church. And so let us do that together constantly. Not just rally day, not just as we look forward to the the programming and the groups that we're signing up for, but that, that's what church can be for us. So let's pray and be thankful for the freedom and the opportunity that we have to do that with God and with each other. God, we are always learning something. Sometimes it's what we expect, and sometimes it's surprising. So we ask that as we work through that, that you would be the constant of love and grace and peace that you have always been, you always are, and you always will be. We thank you for the opportunity to do this together and to love you with our whole hearts. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Isaiah 50, verses 4 through 9a. Uh, you can follow along in your pew Bibles on page 680. Let us listen closely to the word of God. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear, to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheek to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord, help, the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint and know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us uh, stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of God.
I think I speak for everyone. It's very good to have you back. <laughs> Our second reading for this morning comes to us from James chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Hear now God's word. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know the way you teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. But they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them. Yet they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, it sets on fire the cycle of nature as it itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, reptile and sea creature can be tamed. It has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing, my brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pull, pull, pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a great a grapevine of figs? No more can salt water yield, yield fresh. These, my friends, are God's words for us this morning. Thanks. God. How's it going? Today, here at the beginning of the sermon, I'd like to start by telling you a little bit of where I'm going. Let's listen sometime. So it's rally day, which means that we're talking about things like teaching and learning, discipleship and spiritual growth. As you might gather from the title of this sermon, and I'll pause for a second so you can look down and remind yourself of what that is, I'm trying to point out the pitfall, pitfalls of that process. Because as followers of Jesus, Jesus who is our ultimate rabbi and teacher, we understand ourselves as clay, still in the midst of being formed. We're never done learning, exploring new possibilities, of what it means to be people of faith. Now sometimes, as we're learning, that means we're being reminded of something that we've already heard. A lot of good sermons are like that. Just reminding you of things that you've already heard. Love your neighbor as yourself. While other times, it could mean shaking up things in terms of things you thought that you knew. So when I talk about the danger of teaching, which is the sermon title you were looking for, I mean that from two different perspectives. First, the challenge of being in a position of faithfully sharing knowledge. Emphasis on faithfully. That's one perspective. And second, there's a challenge of hearing something about Scripture, or God, or yourself, 
that maybe you've never considered before, and then trying to figure out what to do with it. One or both of these things always has the potential of going off the rails, which is why each should be treated with great care and genuine effort. So, have this as sort of a preface. The purpose of today's sermon is not to erase something that you may believe about God or Scripture or the world. That is not what I'm doing. The goal, instead, is to add another proverbial log to the fire. So that you might sit and ponder life by the light of the Word for just a little while longer. With that in mind, let's begin. So right outside of the city of Jerusalem, try to put yourself in a, in a place that you maybe have never been. Right outside of the city of Jerusalem, there is a place called Gehenna. Gehenna is a valley to the south of town. An area that would have been very familiar to the people that Jesus spoke to and taught. Common knowledge, right? Everyone knows where it is. Familiar, though, unfortunately, for all of the wrong reasons. Gehenna was not a good place to be. Gehenna was quite literally a garbage dump. A place full of small burning trash heaps and open sewage where everything and anything that you did not want went to rot. It's even the place where those in society deemed the most unsavory and unrighteous were buried in shallow graves. I'm painting a picture that's grim on purpose. So if you wanted to walk through a literal valley of the shadow of death, Gehenna was the place for you. Jesus talks about it quite a few times. Take Matthew chapter 5, for example. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, Jesus says, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable for judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to counsel. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the fire of Gehenna. So a literal place that brought to mind a very specific image. An image that maybe you're playing around with in your mind right now. So what Jesus, the teacher, was trying to impart when he said this was, look, not only does murder separate you from experiencing God, but so too do anger and insult. Your actions, your words, your thoughts, those things can be toxic. Now whether you know it or not, my friends, you are very familiar with this term. You and I just use another word. In English, when we speak of Gehenna, we use the term hell. A concept that encapsulates despair and death. And we're familiar with the image, even if we aren't familiar with the original reference. If you go back throughout the New Testament, Gehenna is the word that Jesus and others use over and over again, including our passage for today. The author of James uses the same term in verse 6 when he says, And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body. It sets on fire the cycle of nature and is itself set on fire by Gehenna. So the image of Gehenna is, a, is, of course, meant to point out the, poten the potential consequences of what we say and what we do for both the speaker and the listener. Because our words can unleash an enormous amount of pain, isolation, and harm to those around us. Which is why what and how we teach is so important. 
Now, those who authored the books of the Bible often used literal earthly places like Gehenna to help convey larger theological ideas. And one major place that is, this is done is in the book of Revelation. Revelation is an apocalyptic writing, which means that it uses end times language to describe and give spiritual meaning to current events taking place for its original readers, while also pointing to the ways that God is present in them. So after about 40 years, after the death and resurrection of Jesus, Rome and its emperor were in the midst of a purge in Jerusalem, leading to the death and dispersion of many, many Jews and the destruction of the temple. Now at the time, Revelation was written with coded language, as you've probably heard. Language that Jews and Christians would have understood as direct resistance to the imperial threat that Rome brought. Hope and courage in the midst of despair. Rome might win the battle, but God will win the war. And the hell that people endure today will one day be redeemed by Christ. Like Gehenna, the author here also uses a literal place to describe a metaphoric concept. The epic conflict between good and evil. So, as it's written, as an example, as it's written in Revelation 16, it says this. The sixth angel poured his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up in order to prepare the way for the kings from the east. And I saw three foul spirits like frogs coming from the mouth of a dragon, from the mouth of a beast, and from the mouth of a false prophet. These are demonic spirits performing signs who go abroad to the kings of the whole world to assemble them for battle on the great day of God the Almighty. And they assembled them at the place that in Hebrew is called Megiddo. Now we know Megiddo by its Greek name, Armageddon. This great celestial battle of Armageddon that I'm sure you've heard of is an actual place, Megiddo about 80 miles north of Jerusalem. Megiddo was the location of another memorable battle between Egypt and King Josiah of Judah about 600 years earlier. You can read about that battle in 2 Kings 23. Josiah and Judah lost that battle. But God would not lose this one for the sake of God's people. Right? That's the analogy. Despite the torments inflicted by Rome, there was still hope. The power of learning important details like this in Scripture is that it can either change or enrich our understanding of the passage. When we put that proverbial log on the fire, it encourages us to ponder those elusive lines between what is meant for us to take figuratively and what to take literally. In the same ways that our modern understanding of science can urge us to wonder about the creation and age of the earth, it also allows us the space to consider what is most vital to understanding the nature of God, and the universe. Because in a world where people of faith stand at very different ends of the spectrum, when it comes to what we take literally and what we take figuratively, what is inerrant or authoritative, our willingness to question and discuss these matters is a big deal. If we can accept that from the get-go, that we aren't always going to agree on the details, then it allows us the chance to focus on places of common ground. 
How can we learn to love our neighbor as ourselves? How can we show grace and compassion in the name of Christ? How can we better serve the least of these? How can we care for God's creation and preserve God's people? How can we seek justice for the oppressed and wholeness for the broken? Because the more that people of faith can come together on these things, the closer that we get to experiencing the kingdom of God all around us as it was intended. Now the danger of teaching is that we can very easily get lost in the weeds. Paraphrasing a professor friend of mine, we can get so bogged down by the theory that we lose sight of the practical application. Because understanding without application is devoid of wisdom. A clanging gong whose music reaches no ears. If our learning doesn't lead to knowing God or ourselves or the world more fully, then it simply falls short. And that's what makes it spiritual growth. That our learning allows us to know God and ourselves and the world more fully. Because the clay that we are is always taking shape. And so as we enter this next season of the church, there are great opportunities before us. In the past 18 months, we have learned a lot about ourselves. We've learned what is precious to us. And what maybe is just filler. We've learned the true value of being able to gather together and sing God's praises. And we have a, a renewed appreciation for creating space for peace and rest. My hope for us, as we dream new dreams together, is that our effort and willingness to grow will never diminish. And that the great teacher would guide our knowledge of love and grace and truth. May it be so. And to God be the glory this day and forevermore. Amen. And now in response to God's word, we stand together to affirm our faith. This morning, using an adapted portion of the second Helvetic Confession. The Lord instructed his ancient people to exercise the greatest care that young people, even from infancy, be properly instructed. Moreover, he expressly commanded in his law that we should teach them, and that the mysteries of the sacraments should be explained. Let the children come to me, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. Here let the church show faith and diligence in bringing all God's children to be taught. Desires of glad to have them be well instructed.
is with our confession, we rather talk about the ways that we have fallen short. Yet soon after that, we are united in being told that we are forgiven and loved by God, and we assure each other of that as well. And so now is a moment in our service where, again, as a community, we get to pray with one another. And it's special that uh, our church as Northmont lifts up these prayer requests together in person. There are some churches that don't do this part where we say, please tell us what's on your heart, what's on your minds. But I think it's unique and special that we do that with one another and that we trust one another in that way. So now I want to invite each of you to share with us what's on your hearts, what good things have been happening, what joys can we celebrate with you, but also what's hanging heavy on your hearts and how can we lift you up together. Yeah. A joy, your daughter is six years cancer free. That's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, we, <laughs> yes, thank you to Stephen and all of you. Wonderful music this morning. Like Ben said, it is great to have the communal body leading us in song again. Thank you all. Yes. Yes. So um, prayers for those who have lost loved ones in 9-11, all of the things that led up to that happening and all of the things that have precipitated since that happening. Um, prayers for the continued healing of our world and our nation, for sure. Great. Let us go before God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for who you are. We, thank, we are thankful that you reveal yourself to us in ways that we understand and ways that we may never truly comprehend. We ask that you hear all of the things that were spoken today, all of the joys of health and of healing that have come from your hands. And we ask that you hear our prayer requests of continued healing, healing from trauma and hurt and loss. We know that the last 18 months have not been easy for us for various reasons, to various degrees. And we are tired, and we are worn, and we are weary. But we ask that you give us your presence, and your comfort, and your strength. As we move into this next fall and students go back to school, give them energy, and give them confidence to get through what they need to get through to learn and to grow. As people move back into their jobs, we ask that you give them comfort and protection and strength. And as we move into rally day in our own season in this church, we ask that you be with us. Give us the energy to try something new and to find community amongst those that maybe we've seen across the pews for years but never had a chance to interact with. We ask that you keep us safe as we go from this place and remind us of your presence in days and times when it's easy for us to forget. We ask that you hear all of our unspoken prayer requests this morning. We know that your Holy Spirit will intercede for us when our groanings are simply too deep for words. And we ask all of this in your Son's name who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now is a moment for our tithes and offerings. As we've been doing in the past, the offering plate is outside of this door. You may have seen it when you walked in, but feel free to walk out in that direction if you brought your offering with you today. If you are watching from home or if you prefer to do it differently, you can still mail in your physical offering or we have electronic versions. If you need help with any of that, feel free to reach out to the staff and we will help you. So let us take a moment to pray for our offerings. Gracious and loving God, we know that all of the good things in our lives come from you. 
We ask now that you take our humble gifts and offerings and use them for your good. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. parking lot for our dedication. Second, uh, please be reminded that we have Stephen Minister Judy the Fire Marshal who will be doing all of the uh, wellness calls this week. If you have uh, information for her or something to pass along, her information is there in the bulletin. I think James might be right in saying that be cautious before you decide to teach anything. I think I have an amen here, and from others, because teaching is hard. It's a big responsibility. But also, there is a great responsibility in learning as well. Students of any sort and in any place have a great responsibility. Because learning and teaching can't happen in an empty room. Believe me, I've tried. It's something that happens in a relationship. It happens when you take what someone is trying to tell you and trust them enough to listen and to learn and to at least try to understand where they're headed. And sometimes it means giving them a little pushback, but it also means doing the same to yourself. 
pushing back on the preconceived notions that we have about the world or God or whatever it happens to be, and looking at them, maybe for the first time in a long time. But that is the freedom and the power of God's words. It's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be as disciples, always trying to grow more. But thankfully, as we do this work, whether as teachers or students, we never do so alone. Because we go forward with the compassion and the wisdom of the one who created us and redeems us and sustains us, now and always. Amen.